Welcome to the podcast. I'm Joe Kane. I'm Dan Kane. And I'm Wayne Heckler. And today we have a special guest, Donovan Sell, professional cinematographer. Stick around. And we're back. Um, we have on the line Donovan Sell. He's a professional cinematographer. And um, Donovan, how are you, man? Oh, very good. Thank you. Um, I just w- wanted to start out with saying that we have a, a little bit of a history together. And uh, I don't know if you would like to get into it, uh, but uh, we graduated high school together. Donovan? Yeah. I was, uh, <laughs> I was, yeah. I, I, I got to be honest, I wasn't very scholastic in high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to my benefit, though, that was actually what brought me into the whole filmmaking world. And um, I still, I tell people about it to this day. I live in California now. And, uh, you know, growing up in Oyster Bay, small town, New York, small high school, you know, our whole high school is like 400 kids or just shy of 400. Um you know, I wasn't really feeling the whole school thing, and I was more of a car guy, shop guy. So um, they canceled the shop class at their school. So I was really kind of bummed out. And I was like, man, this is the only thing I was really looking forward to. So in Nassau County there, they had a, a, a vocational program, which was, you know, like a shop class. They did HVAC. They did it was It was through the BOCES houses. program, right? Yeah, the Bosies, and I went there, and I uh, I really didn't know what I wanted to do, so uh, I I signed up for construction electricity because I'm like, well, I can wire up houses and make a few bucks. You know, that's something that's a useful trade. And I got there, and honestly, it was all dudes, <laughs> and uh, it was pretty boring. <laughs> there were no women uh, was, <laughs> wiring yeah, electricity. Like, man, yeah, like this is. This is—I mean—it's cooler than sitting in social studies class, but it's pretty, pretty boring. And <laughs> at least across in, the campus, at least in social studies class, campus. campus. Sorry, <laughs> at least in social studies class, you had yeah. some girls to look at, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And across the campus was cosmetology, where all the girls were, uh-huh. and ironically, next door was the video department. Oh, so that's so, how you got involved? Like, <laughs> Walked across the street? Like, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I'm going to switch uh, switch majors here and go over to video and uh, see what that's all about. <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> well, I saw I saw a little bit. Uh, I know not to date both of us, but uh, we both graduated high school in '96, and uh, I saw that you already started working uh, professionally or semi professionally in the field uh, in '96, right? Yeah, it was kind of a, a crazy realm, but I I ended up working at the public access station in Great Neck. Because our town was so small, we didn't have a public access station. Yeah. We, we, did, we didn't even and, have a fast food restaurant. <laughs> yeah. And then I found a production company, ironically, in Oyster Bay. They were in the um, downtown area. And uh, I, would, I went to their door every day and knocked on the door, and I asked for a job every day for two weeks. Wow. And finally... The guy was just like, "All right, look, we'll just we'll let you have an internship or whatever because you're coming every day." I was just out of it. That's excellent and, persistence. Yes. Yeah, and uh, you know that kind of got me all into the into the game, and it was it was quite a, a whirlwind. I was really just like swooped up, and actually like I cared about going to school every day because it was you know I was making little like short movies and stuff, and learning how to run a TV studio. We had a little TV studio, Bosey. Was, yeah, well, you know what that it makes really it got me going. That makes a big difference when you can go. Okay, it's it's something I'm passionate about and something that I can go out there and do. Uh, yes. I mean, I think we've all done things where it's like, okay, I'm just doing this for the sake of doing it, and you yeah. know, having 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 something that you know you get up to every day and go and go. Okay, this is going to be fun today. You know, is a, is a whole different ball game. And, that, and that's yeah. something about working in this field. I mean, I found, and, and uh, I'm sure you guys have, can chime in if you want on that, but I found that, you know, you, you get up to work and you go and do this. You're not, it's not like a, a slave driving thing. You can you can work 18 hours straight, and uh, and I'm sure, Donovan, you can, uh, can uh, attest, to, attest that. to this, that, you know, you will work 18 hours straight, but you're you're passionate about it, and it's it's a lot of fun, and it's something that you can really put yourself into. 
Yeah, I always, I definitely, I, I, I have too many memories of working crazy days. But I also tell people, you know, like, oh, I want to be, you know, in the film days, or I want to work, you know, in cinematography. And I'm like, well, first off, you don't do it for the money. <laughs> no. <laughs> None of us are rich. <laughs> yeah. And you got to have a love for it because you're going to be here way too much. And it's just, you know, it's a absurd amount of your life is taken up by it. But oh, sure. It's really sure. fun. I, you know, I'm still, I got to pinch myself. I get paid to do this every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you actually seem like a gear guy. I mean, I'm, I'm a, a gearhead myself. I'm always like collecting the next things. I saw a, a nice picture of you online holding the, uh, the red camera and it said something, to, the caption was something to the effect of my new baby or something. Um, <laughs> it just made me laugh. I, I said, oh, I, I, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I felt that picture <laughs> looking at that going, oh my God. Yeah. I want to, I want to hold one of those and, 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 and work with it. Uh, now I, I have done some cinematography myself in in the career and and um, you know uh, just via working with these guys here next to me the um, the the problem is like on ind- independent films which I, I see you've you've done a lot of stuff here and I'm I'm looking at it uh, majority of it is like independent films and you've done a lot of short films um, and I you know you you get out there and you go and you do this. Um, but you're more than just okay. I'm just directing this. You're you're over there doing cinematography because I'm directing it and I have no choice. <laughs> you know, you don't have a, always have the luxury of having a full crew behind you. Um, have you found that experience in what you're doing? Yeah, I would definitely say I um, I began actually in in Long Island there at the public access station. And I wanted to do a, a show because when you work at the station, everyone has the ability to do their own show. Oh, that's cool! And all my f- and all my friends were like, you know, car dudes. So I, w- I wanted to do a car show, but you know, no one uh, no one wanted to be the director. And I was like, oh, I guess I got to direct this thing. So mm-hmm. I was directing it and like shooting, but I really I pr- I really rather be just shooting it. I didn't really want to direct so much. I wanted to just you know do the. I really get. I love the gear and playing with the cameras and the lenses and the lights and stuff. So I really was like, man, this whole directing thing is kind of a drag, but I love just if someone wanted to just, you know, tell someone else what to do and I'll just light it and shoot it. That'd be great. (laughs) Nice. Hey, Donovan, since you brought that up, explain to me what cinematography is for our audience if they're not sure exactly what a cinematographer does. Yeah, it's a good because when people ask me what I do, I just say I'm off the top. I just say I'm a photographer, which isn't easier to explain. <laughs> but you, you get you 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 sidestep the question. <laughs> yeah, but cinematography basically is a uh, you know the, the director he has a vision of you know how he wants his movie to be or his commercial or his music video, um, and they usually you know someone will come to me with references like. They've seen that they have this video that they want it to look like, or they have this still image that, you know, a visual uh, tool that they really like, or they just have a song that gives a look and feel. Um, and they, they want to express that visually, but they're not really sure how to put all these things together. And they come to someone like me, a cinematographer, and I'll, you know, say, well, you know, I think we should do this on film, or we should do this on digital, or we should do this on, you know, some gritty, like, Let's find an old VHS camera that someone threw away and, you know, <laughs> yank it out of the garbage. You know, just to help someone visually achieve what they want, I'm pretty much the middleman that just breaks it down technically-wise and knows, you know, has a good understanding of the tools at hand to help really capture the visual image that someone wants to get. That's awesome. I, I actually looked up at just out of... Um stupidity maybe i don't know i just the define cinematography and literally there was one little short sentence that came up and i I thought it was funny because it's such more complex than this but it the the definition was the art of making motion pictures (laughs) isn't that kind of true it's 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 so true yet isn't it kind of (laughs) that that's kind of the definition for like anybody in the field it's really like the yeah. art of each shot. 
is what it really yeah. is. It's the artist, it's the look of it. It's like a painter when you're painting that particular image that's in your mind. So when the director, he feels something, right? He's asking you, I want to bring you to bring this to life. She, you know, uh, show me, I want to be in the 1950s. What lenses do we need to give this feel? What else can we do besides um, the stage dressing of how it brings up, how it could look like the 50s? So I'm sure you have different ideas. Oh, I want this to be a little spooky, so there's, there's always challenges behind that. Now, could you give any examples of particular lenses that do different things? Or it's, I know it's more than that, but do you have any type of examples that you could give that would set a mood or a tone? Yeah, actually, I mean, like you said, the lenses have a lot of um, a lot of strength on the image now. And a um, you know, uh, massive company, was worldwide company, it still is, but it's gotten a little smaller, is Panavision. They created, they would build their own cameras and their own lenses. And in the film world, um, you know, you would shoot on a on a German built camera in Ari, or you shoot on a Panavision camera. Hmm. And Panavision now they don't. Now that we've all gone digital, the they didn't really bother making any digital cameras, but they're <laughs> still making their lenses. Hmm. And their lenses, um, they've made different series, and the series came out in different generations, and you know, the earlier generations lenses from the 50s, from the 60s and the 70s, they tend to have a similar a, a feeling and a look that captures that decade that they were created in because everything that we saw was shot in on those lenses. Yeah. So that is a pretty, a really strong tool that we'll use when someone's like, hey, I want a 70s piece or I, I want a 50s I, piece. I guess there's people out there making <laughs> adapters to fit these things to, like uh, I use the RED camera, for example, or an Alexa or something like that. They they have an adapter lens to fit these lenses on. Yeah, I mean, these lenses, you could you could even put them on a 5D, like a camera you go by a Best Buy yeah, now yeah. with adapters. So it's pretty amazing how even by just putting that glass on changes the look so much from, you know, say, your, your 5D that you buy with a kit lens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that looks... It's a technically perfect uh, glass, and it's beautiful for that reason. But it's kind of the imperfections that we had back in the older glass that really give things a little bit of more flavor and color. Well, I, had a, I had a friend of mine who's a uh, he just uh, flat out he goes, you know what, you can you can buy a, a you know five hundred dollar camera, and it doesn't really matter. It just the more important than anything else is the glass that's in front of it. Because that's what's yeah. going to make the feel. That's what that's what you're looking through to ma- to make it do that. The other thing is just a recording device. Yeah, just a pretty. I mean, all the digital cameras now they're all amazing and they get a great image. But uh, to be honest, my guilty pleasure is going on eBay and finding old Russian like knockoff German lenses <laughs> from the 40s and 50s. And they're, they're oddball lenses that nobody wants. You could score them for 50, 60 bucks. Wow. And I could slap them on a red or an Arri camera. And they just, they, they look beautiful and funky and they got imperfections and they're dirty. And they just, the digital cameras are so precise and so clean. The lenses kind of muck it up and make it look a little more pretty. Yeah, cool. Now, what is they, it? They muck it up to make it pretty. That's a great. Yeah. What, what is like the difference that. between filming on on film and digital? Like, which do you prefer? You have any preference? Thirty five millimeter. Um, yeah, I actually. I mean, I, I started from video, um, you know, way back in the public access days, and you know that was all I knew. Um, I never took a photo class in my life, so film to me was not you know something I wasn't familiar with at all. But at the time, video was really limiting because the technology was only so strong. And um, back then, I guess 96 is when um, digital was around, but it was just the strong, you know, news and TV was shot on digital and anything uh, commercial or anything on a movie was shot on film. And it just it had uh, a lot stronger of a, a lot better color retention and a lot better light retention. So I was like, damn, I gotta learn this film stuff. <laughs> Cause I really was really wanted this perfect image. So that's what brought me out West was to go to film school. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, did, uh, you did, you did attend film school. What film school did you attend? Could yeah. we, uh, let's do some promotions uh, went, for this school. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Academy of art in San Francisco and, um, primarily because, 
I had to get out of New York because I was interning, I was working, I had my hustle on, but I was also going to a junior college in New York and I was kind of blown off school to go work on set every day. So I was like, well, I can go to school today or I can go make, you know, 200 bucks and hang out on set. So I was like, man, if I'm going to you know, pay all this money to go to film school, I got to go somewhere where I don't know anybody and I'm not going to be tempted to go run to you know, a film set. <laughs> so, and you know San Francisco was kind of close to Lake Tahoe which has really good snowboarding and mountain biking so that kind of led into it too <laughs> excellent excellent now it's funny but, Tony, um, sorry go ahead no. Tony, yeah, think, <laughs> you guys are just going to step all over each other uh, today aren't you <laughs> yeah but just jumping back to the film digital thing just a quick I love film film has this natural like organic thing to it it's not as technical and not as precise as digital but i also grew up with digital so i i embraced it and really i was just waiting for digital to get as good enough or close to film to be professional so when yeah. digital finally came to where it is i was stoked and like when the red one came out i jumped right on it <laughs> it was like awesome like I'm ready for this. Let's that is, that is some camera. Um, you know, I, I actually haven't personally gotten a chance to get my hands on one of the Reds. We, we did just uh, recently shoot a music video, and uh, we used the Canon uh, C300 Mark II. Um, oh, nice. I, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but uh, the uh, great great picture out of this thing. I mean, and it was you know mm -hmm. we we rented it and we came out of the with a couple of really nice lenses that we got, and wow, what a, I, I was really impressed. So, I mean, looking at the red, I'm just, you know, I'm jealous. That's all. <laughs> now, now, I noticed with the quality of digital, of course, it got better over the years. I remember as a child, I started filming very young, one of the first video recorders when it had the two pieces as big as a VCR you had to carry with you. And the whole thing we used to say, me and my brother was, you know, we want that film look, that filled in look, we called it. You know, it was the grain. And then it's funny because the way digital got, it started getting sharper and sharper, but you could always tell it's video. But now what I find even with the HD TVs, it's almost back to that. It almost doesn't feel as um, dreamy. Like when you watch a film, you're engrossed in it because it's a fantasy. Sometimes when things are too sharp and too pronounced, it almost feels like you could tell, like even the actors seem different. Sometimes you watch it so clean, like, well, the actors, are they not acting as well as they do? So sometimes, like even when you watch a Friends episode now on high def, it almost has a different feel than you used to watch it. it has a, there's a slight different... Um, it, it's got, it's it. gotten so high definition that now we're looking at it and we're going, oh my God, this guy needed more makeup. Or, or you know, you start blaming yeah. the makeup department going, wow, I can see every little wrinkle on this person's face. <laughs> and, and I'm sure they're, they're like, oh God, I, look what I look like, you know? Like, yeah. I appreciate that grain is what I think. I think it brings me more into the fantasy of a film. Well, well, digitally also now they've come up with a lot more things that are, um, you know, uh, plugins that can go Absolutely. on top of it. So make you can, it look you like can this. make it look more filmic. Absolutely. That's the beauty of it. And it's easy to edit. It's a whole different system now, but it's great. I mean, yeah. I love the advances. Like you said, um, is you waited until it reached the level it does, and now it's exciting again. It definitely well, is. I wanted to take a second, Donovan, to uh, to address the film that you just... I don't know if you just wrapped up on it, and I know you're, you're working hard. Um, you know, you just told me you had like a 12-hour day or something after you... Uh, before you called us in. Um uh, in World War, um, it's in post production right now. Uh, it's coming out in 2017. Uh, you want to give us a, a, a quick, brief synopsis or anything uh, about this film? Yeah, in World War was uh, it was interesting. It was it was kind of at a time when I I I was really in a creative rut. I was really just in this commercial hustle, like corporate videos, commercials, and. Um, you know, corporate videos and commercials, there's not much artistry, to be honest. It's pretty straightforward. You know, everything's uh, very, very taken care of, very talked about, very um, safe. You know, no one wants to do anything too You lose a lot of creativity. Crazy. Yeah. And I was really looking to get, you know, do a movie or some kind of short film again. And I ran into the director, Brad. The guy just had, like, tons of energy. He was really excited. And... You know, sci-fi is not my genre at all. But you <laughs> You're know, talking to three guys here who like, are like totally <laughs> sold on sci-fi, by the way. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're like sci-fi no, I mean, freaks. It's, it's not my genre just because I don't have any experience in it. And that's why I'm like, you know what? I really 
I want to do some sci-fi to get my hands in, involved and like do some of it. Um, I just don't have anything on my reel that was sci-fi. So I was like, you know, this is a great, great chance. And, you know, this director really seems like he's going to finish this project. This is going all the way through because so many projects you do. You know, people are really excited about it and it seems awesome. And after you shoot it, it just kind of gets stuck in editing limbo or it just gets shelved. And I'm like, if I'm going to put this much time and effort into a project, I, I really want to make it, you know, have it get to the screen. I want people to see it. Yeah. I don't want it just to get shelved. So the director, Brand, Brand, he was just super jazzed. I'm like, man, this guy is the guy. Like, he is going to finish this. You know, tooth or nail, whatever it's going to take, he's going to get it done. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let's work together. Now, this and, is, just to clarify, this is a full-length feature, correct? Yeah, it was a uh, you know, full-length feature. We shot, to be honest, I don't remember the amount of shooting days because it's been about two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. um, he had a massive... He like started editing it for about a year, and then I think his whole like his whole system or something got corrupt, and he had to like go back and re-edit everything. So oh. it was a massive setback. I know exactly we, how we, that we feels. Oh, oh my god! Dude. I ran through the yeah. same thing. Yeah. You just you just so struck a nerve with us <laughs> <laughs> with sound, and we had to redo a lot. Yeah, but we, yes. know we, were, we were editing uh. a, a thirty-five minute short film, so you know, pretty lengthy for a short film, and uh, we lost every piece of sound yeah and i, I feel bad for uh, my my brother sitting next to me because he was the, the live sound guy holding up the boom ball for days but yeah. we had to build from uh, scratch everything so all voiceovers all adr oh, and terrible. all the foley that we wow. had to do for everything but um you know it came out pretty good at the end but it was just a big undertaking to redo stuff you should have had originally it's disheartening sometimes I think they had to do a bunch of that on this too for some reason. They lost <laughs> sound files. It's a mess. I did around. see I did see some of the concept art from this uh, movie, and it looks looks pretty wild and out there. And I also saw a it, it, it's a one still frame picture of man. It's a guy standing in a suit and tie, and his head is like a bird in a cage. I, I can't even explain it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're laughing. Like I, I'm. Go ahead. We, we were, I think we were basically trying to re redo the Matrix, you know, that, <laughs> saying that is a film as reference for the budget size, and we had the budget for like a peanut butter commercial. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. It was, it was really you know stretching thin, and I didn't have you know like usually all these commercials, these corporate videos. And I have a huge crew, and it's great. We had like we had like a van with a few lights and. You know, I had a handful of people to help. It was, <laughs> we it was were really in a van digging down deep. by a river. That was a, <laughs> it just popped into my head. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> just like a, a, you know, with like some government cheese to eat. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> That's but it awesome. was uh, it was a great experience to just kind of like get down and dirty, get back into you know that indie hustle and make you know, a nice little movie. And the uh, so brand, he really he got together a great team of people. And people that wanted to be there, you know, nobody. Was, I think maybe people are being paid a hundred dollars a day, but I don't even think so. I think it was all volunteers, but you know, yeah. just diehard people down for the cause, and it was great. Like we, we all just you know got in the trenches and made it happen. Well, sometimes that's the best way. Really good stuff. Yeah, so sometimes that's, that's the awesome. best yeah. art that you can do is if you get everybody who's just dedicated to the. Uh, the, the grand scheme of things rather than going, oh, I, I need a paycheck at the end of the week. You know, Not that a paycheck is a bad thing, but... <laughs> and this is Brant Smith, right? Director Brant Smith, correct? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Do you have any uh, um, hashtags or anything you'd like to throw out there for that movie in particular? Or? Um, I don't know if he's... I'm sure he has a social campaign going. Um, <laughs> I, we can't let him hear this because yeah. yeah, I have no idea how to get in touch with him. Well, it'll come, I'm <laughs> yeah, sure, in I, World War. Yeah, we could, I'm sure they could yeah. find yeah, it. I think, I think he has a website going and everything. Um, it's definitely because he did an interview with me also about the film. and I think it was an email interview, so it's archived somewhere. I, you want to uh, hear something that's funny? We actually found the interview. Oh, there you are. <laughs> the, one of the questions, yeah, he, one of the questions he asked: How would you describe in World War the film itself in no more than seven words? Do you remember what you said? <laughs> oh man, no. 
<laughs> indie <laughs> sci-fi to its core. <laughs> it's all a blur now. There we go. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Donovan, you also mentioned that you were in Korea. What did you do in Korea? I know there was a, a film, Demon Empire, also. Um, I think you were the cameraman on that. But what else, did you do major projects in Korea? What were you doing there? I actually, I did um, three or... I think I did three films in Korea, and then the fourth one was a Korean film that we shot in China um, you know, for like nine months in China, which was pretty intense. Wow. But I, in film school in San Francisco, I hooked up with a fella who was a grad student. He was a Korean cinematographer. I didn't know he was pretty established. You know, I just found he was a nice guy. We got along. We partied together. We worked together. And after he graduated, he said, oh, I'm going to go back to Korea and I'm going to get a movie and bring you over. And I was, yeah, sure, buddy, whatever. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, shortly after he went back to Korea, he shoots me a, an email. Uh, I think he called me and he's like, hey, um, I got this movie. You want to come to Korea? And I was like, yeah, I'm down. Let's do this. And to be honest, I got on a plane. I did not know where Korea was on that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I it's I funny, I got, I got a chance to go perform in Korea, and I was singing in a vocal group when I was in college, and uh, I got to go to Korea, and I remember getting on the plane and like being like, we, I, I basically sat in the middle of a row in the center of the plane that was five seats across, and of course, I was sitting bitch in the middle, yeah. and uh, uh, it was 18 hours there. <laughs> I remember that was the worst oh experience. So, so now you travel to Korea, was it anything you expected? Was there a big surprise what it ended up being? Um, it wasn't too, you know, because at that point I was working in film school and we were working on like, and we were doing, we were pretty much shooting. So I tried to shoot, you know, at least one thing a week. And so we were shooting a lot and we were shooting film always. So when I went over to Korea, it was just like a real professional film shoot. We're like, wow, we got this movie we're doing. And, um, I was first went over as his assistant, and then I was camera operating for him, and um, didn't speak a lick of Korean. Hmm. But to my advantage, you know, the camera department, you really, you don't need to communicate too much. I mean, my the cinematographer would communicate with me, okay, this is what's happening in the scene, this is what we want to convey, you know, this lens, you know, all right, that's about all I need to know. <laughs> and it was it was great. It was Comes kind of hardcore. Does <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that ring a bell? There we go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> my my couple of choice phrases. <laughs> and on uh, yahaseo, <laughs> hello and thank you. Wow, good, good job. Yeah. So uh, I spent a good bit of time over there. I spent about two years over there making, working in these films. And um, you know, there's no at the time there was no workers' rights. There was no, uh, there's no unions. So, you know, it wasn't uncommon to do a 36 hour day. Wow. And wow. I've never worked that hard in my life. <laughs> and actually, God willing, things, you won't be doing that uh, that hard yeah. again. <laughs> one of the things actually, when I interviewed with Brant Smith, the shoot during World War, he's like, all right, everyone, I want everyone to work harder than they've ever worked before in their life. <laughs> you can say that. Yeah, right. And I said, <laughs> you know, I just said, I was like, you know what, Brian? I'm going to give you 100%, and I'm going to guarantee you that. <laughs> I'm going to go 100%, but I'm sorry, I am not going to work harder than I've ever worked because <laughs> I've already done that. Yeah, because he had no and clue how hard you really worked already, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was definitely a very good experience, right, to take that with you, knowing you did that. Anything by comparison, like, I've been through the trenches, I'm ready for this. So that's one benefit. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't until after coming home from Korea that I really started. Um, I still didn't call myself a cinematographer, but I went out, I was working for people. Like, up until then, my own stuff. And, you were basically you know, doing I, it without doing it, <laughs> without being titled. Yeah. It. <laughs> But then once I got, you know, after Korea, which was just, you know, day in and day out, just film making, film working, I uh, I just had such a good grasp and I really felt the confidence to, you know, come home and say, you know what, I'm ready to start shooting for other people. Uh, that was great because then I started shooting for other people, which I slowly built up a reel. And it wasn't until, i say 2010 that I actually called myself a cinematographer. Yeah. 
up until then, I just, I worked and I just called myself a film worker. So I wasn't making films necessarily, so I wasn't a filmmaker. I was just working on other people's projects. Yeah, yeah. So it uh, it took me a while to really, you know, embrace that term cinematographer because well, I was just a guy in the trenches, you know, working. Being a, being a true cin- cinematographer, you're you're the ultimate collaborator, I believe, between the director and and the vision that the director wants on screen. And, uh, you mm-hmm. know, that's a much more creative process is being... the in that shoe, in those shoes, to be, hey, I'm a, I'm a cinematographer. Yeah. I'm part of this storytelling. Yeah, projecting the image that's that they feel, want. Yeah, there's just so much more than just being the camera guy or the video yeah. guy. Is you know, I'm, Point I'm and shoot over there. Early. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What you see that person there? Yeah, film them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Donovan. We gotta um, just. I wanted to just uh, leave you with a couple of uh, uh, quick things. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, uh, a brief question. What do you think? We've done a ton of short films. Uh, we've done a ton of short films. We are moving on. We're in the process of uh, working on our first uh, full-length feature. Um, and we, you know, where do you think the uh, idealistic point of where films are heading, where short films specif- specifically are heading? I mean, I think, you know, the, it's easy to say the internet, yeah. but, you know, the, the internet is just such a great distribution channel for anything visual now, and um, I think it's such a great time to be a filmmaker because, you know, now so many more people can see your film that you never would imagine before so easily. Yeah. You know, because previously you had to go to film festivals and then someone actually has to go to a film festival and whatnot. And, you know, now it's, you know, Amazon can pick it up or yeah, yeah. it's on Hulu or it's on YouTube. And, um, there's a lot we, more mediums for we, it to be seen. Yeah. And I just think that's, that's why I do what we do is I just love hearing people talk about, hey, did you see that film or did you see that commercial that I shot? And that to me is like, that's the best I ever is when someone talks. Know, great about something that I've shot, and then they realize it's like, oh, you did that, and it's like, yeah, yeah. It's, hmm. that's a nice, that's, that's a nice great. pat on the back. It's vindication for yeah. what you're working on. Good feeling, yeah, definitely. Well, Donovan, yeah, that's, it's that's been. All I need. What'd you say? <laughs> I missed the last thing. That's, that's all I need. Yeah, that keeps <laughs> that's, that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, money is a whole other, just a bonus on top. We want to get the art out there. We want people to say, wow, I saw that. And that's a wonderful thing about internet too. Even if you released it just privately just to get a couple short films out, it's rewarding. Sometimes you have to put the money aside and say, I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to get it out there. And the money will come eventually when people start to realize the artistry behind it. it, it it's hard to, to sustain yourself and keep going. You know, um, you know, you have to have a, 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 a people behind you that are supportive of you. Also, you know, just the the vindication, like you said, of of going and going. Oh, I, I, that was a great commercial. Oh, you did that. That's awesome. <laughs> you know that that's that's good too. But you know, you also need your your family and your friends and everybody else behind you, or else it's not going to work. You, you're you're going to be you know out there by yourself. You know. When yeah, when you, when you come in after sport. eighteen hour days and you go oh god you know <laughs> you need somebody just to, to say it's okay <laughs> go take a nap <laughs> a very good wife goes a long way yes yes uh, you have uh, a daughter too I'm I, I, I'm being uh, all, all just, creepy and stalker like I saw on your Facebook <laughs> no nah, yeah just just one and uh, I'm gonna just be straight up and say it I'm selfish I don't think I could do another one so both my <laughs> wife and I are happy. <laughs> my I, wife, she's a production designer, so she works uh, also in films and commercials. And you know, you can imagine two freelance adults raising a kid. We <laughs> keep joking that that one of us should get a real job. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like, I, too I, much like, fun. This we like this better. I can't, I, I can't do it. And she's like, I can't do it. I'm like, oh, one of us should. <laughs> Maybe we'll make our daughter do it. She'll go out and get the real job. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, honey, you're going to support we're pushing, mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, we're pushing for business school. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she doesn't choose art school. Yeah. <laughs> She wants to go to art school. No. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the dreaded. 
upset and he's like, no, please, no art school, just business school. <laughs> <laughs> um, what projects are you working on now, Don? Um, I just, um, uh, this week I'm doing a series of corporate stuff for, um, actually you're a musician. Do you know uh, Dama uh, Guitar Accessories? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, they do the strings and the pedals and when, <laughs> guitar accessories. When, when this uh, podcast comes out, by the way, you'll see that I'm actually sitting in my studio and there's a, a entire wall of guitars but sitting behind me. Unfortunately, you're on the phone. You can't see that. So, oh. so you know it well then. Yeah. Yes, the, uh, yes. I I know nothing of music much stuff, but I uh, with the, with Dunlop guys, I've really gotten into this great venues and met some really talented people and um, so I do all the videos for Dunlop's uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Which is their, their prime, you know, they, it's like for guitar accessories, you got guitar magazines and that's about it. So their, their advertising is all done through the website yeah. and YouTube. So uh, they're really awesome guys. The the two guys at the head are Max and Joey and they, uh, they're super film geeks. So, <laughs> you know, we make really cinematic uh, commercials for guitar accessories, which is awesome. Oh, that's nice. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, and the, uh, you know, it's funny because like going back to film school, I was the least film guy at film school because I was like the video guy that was, you know, from Long Island and then the cars. Yeah. Wasn't like a film geek at all. So, you know, and these, these guys are all talking about the great directors. And, you know, <laughs> Citizen films. Kane, you write all these movies, yeah. right? And, and you're talking about the Monte Carlo you just did work on. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, yeah, sure, show me an image. I'll, uh, I'll replicate it. And nice. uh, hey, you want to see the sweet, like, Porsche I was looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Different frame of mind. That's great. It's fun, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I got to ask but, uh, you one more thing. Our 20-year reunion is coming up this summer. Are you going to make it out to New York? Wow, that's happening, huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> happening. <laughs> Isn't that well, scary? I kind of, yeah, I missed the 10 because that must have come and gone. You know what's funny? My, uh, I, Ashley is my uh, cousin who is the person who uh, was in charge of all of that, putting that together, and uh, she actually forgot to invite me to the 10. <laughs> and I, <laughs> yes. well, you know what? I don't think she forgot. I don't, <laughs> I don't think so either. You know this? Well, guy? <laughs> ironically, I crashed their own ten-year anniversary. And they're like, "Oh, what are you doing here?" And I'm like, uh, "You forgot to invite me." <laughs> I'm like, "Is this a single?" Oh, really? If they asked, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> they didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Donovan, well, it's been to, awesome, to, but we're gonna we're gonna have to wrap up right now. We're at the we're at that time. Um, I I really appreciate it. You know what? Hang on the phone, and we're gonna talk to you a little bit after um, on the side of here. But uh, as far as the podcast goes, thank you very much for being on this. Yes, thank you. Um, check out DonovanCell dot com. Correct me if I'm wrong, Donovan. Yeah, D O N A V A N Cell S C L L. There you go, dot .com. Um, and it's got a little bit more about him if you want to find out more information. Um, and the upcoming big movie that he is uh, has just worked on and finished, uh, just worked on, I guess it was two years ago, you said, um, is In World War. And uh, look that up and get some information on that. And we will uh, catch you next time. Thank you, Donovan. Very informative. Yes, thank you very much. You are Thanks the best, man. Take care, guys. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Awesome. Bye. Bye-bye.